हेलो मैम यस मैम वी आर रेडी बजट हेलो जितिशा जितिशा हेलो जितिशा हाँ सर बोला तुम सब वीडियो आने ऑडियो बंद रखो ना सदैव बंद करो ओके गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम टू वन एंड ऑल माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर सुभाष दोंदे on the behalf of department of zoology of kirti college extends my warm welcome to today's guest speaker dr sunia chavan madam as well as the members of teaching staff and students of kirti college attending this invited lecture of academic festival named srujan 2022 being all animals such as dogs cats birds and ornamental fishes pets are very much a part of our subject that is zoology but we seldom study them in detail or even superficially as they are not a direct part of our zoology curriculum however they are extensively studied and researched in veterinary and animal husbandry colleges these colleges offer ug and pg programs in veterinary science and animal husbandry i am specially delighted today as we are organizing this talk on a very unique offbeat or unconventional subject since all our previous invited talks were mostly on the subjects area of oceanography or coastal or mangrove ecology or wildlife biology biology during the course of human evolution we all started our journey from the caves as a caveman to the present day highly evolved and intelligent human beings during the journey pets and domesticated animals too co-evolved with human beings and we simply cannot think of human civilization without these age old friends of mankind of course these friends are none other than pets and domesticated animals keeping pets is highly rewarding with respect to innumerable health benefits one derives from their association and ownership this fact has been proved beyond doubt that pets particularly dogs with their highly developed sixth sense can foresee or predict major health events such as getting stroke or heart attack or early detection of cancer or suddenly becoming extremely hypoglycemic in such situation they can save the life of their master or owner by giving timely warning signal through their unusual change behavior i will not talk much about it as we all are eager to listen to many known unknown dimensions about pets from our today's distinguished and professional speaker dr sonia chavan madam hence now i request our hod professor sangore sir to present his opening remark or welcome speech over to <coughs> hod professor dd sangore sir thank you thank you donde sir so good morning everyone myself professor dd sangore hod zoology welcome to all of you for joining this today's lecture department of zoology organizes or conducting various programs each and every year for academic festival surajan 2022 under the lecture series we have organized a lecture for students of kirti college as well as other colleges students and fraternity on behalf of the department and uh, kirti college management and principal dr dv power i welcome to today's guest speaker dr sonia chavan for delivering her lecture uh, yesterday uh, day before yesterday jitisha chavan madam was talked with uh, dr sonia Ma sonia madam and she accept our invitation within a very short time i am very much thankful for accepting uh, the invitation uh, for delivering a lecture for our students i hope dr sonia madam speech will be helpful for all students as to this program now i hand over to jitisha madam thank you jitisha madam yes sir
Good morning, everybody. Okay. With the permission from the dignitaries on this virtual dais, I would like to introduce Dr. Sonia Samir Chavan, Masters in Veterinary Sciences Surgery. Ma'am has completed both her bachelor's and master's in veterinary science from Bombay Veterinary College, Mumbai. Doctor, a dedicated animal lover, animal advocate, is also oriented towards women empowerment, livelihood enhancement, under which she learns the art forms herself, like cooking, candle making, and many more. Then she teaches all those art forms. Skill development, all these activities are apart from the animal welfare. Being a surgeon for the last 30 years, she has helped various NGOs, SPCAs, animal welfare organizations, etc. by training the vets and paravets about aseptic protocols, standard surgical and post-surgical care, awareness programs for children and youngsters, human ways of street dog population control, also control rabies and other zoonotic diseases. Doctor has held posts as Country Coordinator India for Vets Beyond Borders Australia, CEO at SPCA Goa, CEO Pet Concern, Project Manager, Project Manager Vet Train for Vet Beyond Borders Australia. This was a joint venture with Humane Society International USA, Animal Welfare Board of India Chennai and Vet Beyond Borders Australia. Project Manager at Mavel Women Dairy Entrepreneurship Program, a joint venture with Tata Power and Access Livelihood Consultancy, Telangana. As a farm superintendent, research unit of Bovine Veterinary Care Unit number 22, Are Colony, Goregaon. Ma'am has many accolades to her name, but of it, I mentioned a Lifetime Achievement Award from the CM of Goa for her selfless work. She is an honorary in charge of three animal control units and anti-rabies private clinics. Apart from this, she loves aesthetic aspects of traditional art forms and many more. Dr. Sonia Chavan, in her career spanning 30 years, has medically and surgically treated variety of animals such as ruminants, horses, wild animals, dogs, cats, monkeys, guinea pigs, poultry, birds like emu, peacock, parrots, reptiles like snakes, monitor lizards, crocodiles, and mammals like bovine and many more. I request Dr. Sonia to enlighten our mind with the knowledge so that animal welfare work can be done at every nook and corner of India. Over to you, ma'am. Hello, a very good morning to all of you who are um, listening to my lecture online. I would like to thank this um, college of Kitty College, the Faculty of Zoology for uh, their coordination and their deep interest in uh, um, making this information available to you. So in a brief day, one day time, Jigisha uh, helped me to make this PowerPoint presentation I and mean, we are here to let you know uh, about the responsible pet ownership, especially of dog. Uh, as a child, all of you, uh, even the professors or the uh, youngsters who are out there online right now, must have thought about having their own pet because it is a practical experience that we as veterinarians as well as everybody has seen that the youngsters whoever are um, staying along or the, they are grown up along with any pet maybe it is a community pet maybe it is a street dog or maybe it is own pet they uh, grow up like a very uh, caring and look, uh, they look after the animals very, very well. They get the responsibility, so they become a responsible citizen afterwards. That is my personal experience. I and I hope you all must be um, accepting this. So let's go ahead with um, what are the needs, or uh, means how we can go ahead with 
having your pet and how we can become a responsible owner. So there are whenever you want to accept a, a, in your house, that means it's a member who is going to be welcomed in your house and he's going to stay with you throughout his life. It's not a temporary procedure. He's not a, somebody who is just a guest who has come for some days. Okay, so first thing I would like to tell you whenever you think of having a pet, you think about certain things. There are varieties of pets which you can have. Is first is canine. Canine means you must be knowing as a pet. Normally we keep dogs. Then we can have a cat. We can have small pigs. Some people keep some reptiles also. Reptiles like in this one also, they keep the small uh, lizards they keep, or sometimes um, sand bow snake, or even you can go ahead with having some boars which are legally allowed to be kept. Now they are not uh, endangered species. So avian means the boars, you can, can keep uh, some type of boars whichever are legally allowed to be kept. And people allow to keep ornamental fish. There are varieties of colorful fish. They even maintain your blood pressure. You know, it, uh, people don't suffer from high BP. If you are looking after the pets, you are looking, you know, it's a, a lot of entertainment, joy at home. Pet animals are actually kept by people for fun, frolic, entertainment. But I'm here to tell you that there are other than that, even there are some responsibilities we have towards them. So when, how you will, we are going to decide which type of pet do you want? Basically your size matters. So there are different, they come in different sizes. So here we are talking mainly about the dogs. In miniature breed, you get the poodle or tiny or dachshunds or uh, um, a, a, any of these dogs which are around zero to five kg. We call that toy breeds, right? This small Yorkshire you can keep. So these are the toy breeds. Then uh, you get something called small size around five, above 5 kg up to 10 kg. You get uh, even if they can uh, be up to 15 kg also. Pomeranians come under this. Then medium size we get which are uh, boxers or um, our mongrel breed also, our own indigenous breed. Then large size you get grid dens. And uh, not only Grenin, there are many different breeds, but I'm just making you aware that this is the roughly size. And in maxi size, Newfoundland, or which are very large, huge. So why I'm telling you that? Because when you bring the puppy, it might be very small, obviously. But as they grow, they are going to grow to what size you must be aware of. And accordingly, you should be prepared to look after that, you know, provide them the size, the space availability or, you know, the food requirement, everything depends on that. So first you should think about which size of animal do you want to keep. The next that you can think about the gender, because as you know, in any breed, the male, female, uh, the requirements are different. Basically the reproductive status that they have, you know, the females have to, um, they, they have this periods problem, what is commonly called as, which is we call it as stress cycle. In case of dogs, they exhibit stress cycle almost twice in a year, that is once in six months. So uh, in that case, you have some care you have to take, even in that case, uh, even the male that time exhibits certain type of um, signs. So even they don't eat, they also uh, show some type of anxiety. So that care also has to be taken. And most important thing is that if you are kept a pair of female and male together, then obviously they are going to breed, whether you want to breed them or not. If you are breeding them, what are the number of litter size? Litter means the number of puppies they are going to have. And their pregnancy period, what we call a gestation period, is just two months. Obviously, it depends on the, the breed size also. If it is a farm or small size breed, it may deliver in 50 days and a big size breed makes it take 65, but roughly they have 60 days gestation period. And during that particular stage of 60 days, um, they are going to have so many babies. So 
a um, lot of uh, care has to be taken of the female dog and plus um, the lactating female or the female which is in which is pregnant first then the delivered one lactating female has to be taken care of neonatal care of the puppies also they should be taken care of so if you are responsible that is one way uh, responsible owner otherwise you can go ahead with neutering neutering uh, is done uh, mainly uh, by way of spaying uh, in case of female and uh, males, we go, go ahead with the castration. I'm going to discuss it in detail further. Then another thing which you have to think of is very important actually whether you would like to go for a furry breed or a non-furry. Because uh, obviously so in the family, sometimes some people have some allergic reaction or most important thing is that grooming is very important. Grooming also we are going to discuss in detail later, but it's a time consuming because we have bath every day. They are not going to have bath every day. Once in 15 days and all they take sometimes for seven days. It depends on whatever size they are of and how much dirty or matted they become. If they are small puppy might need a quick uh, bath um, on alternate day also because it goes to not clean or leak itself so that is one and grooming also it's a costly affair also sometimes people can't do it at home so they have to go for grooming to the grooming facilities then hair trimming nail clipping ear cleaning there are so many things are involved with it so the other things are with any animal but the fur matters fur you have to be careful and the daily grooming daily brushing at least is must Then another important thing is that, see, we have to mainly think of uh, that uh, the space which we as a family are uh, occupying the space, same space the new member of the, uh, of the family is going to share. We cannot say that this dog won't come in the kitchen, that dog won't come in this living area or our bedroom. See, whatever, it's, it's, it's a, now I have my dogs. So I always say that they are my children are my human children and my dogs are my pets who are, they are my pet children. So if you give them that same respect and the space and whatever tantrums they they, they throw that also you have to accept just like our children are whenever you are sleeping on the bed or even though your dog has got its own bed he is going to come and sleep with you so that also you should be ready to accept the space should be given even to the animals to be inside uh, the house they have the right to be inside see there is another topic what is the rights of animals the uh, cruelty things about animals or the animal welfare these are big issues but right now we have taken a very small topic which will be close to your hearts that is why we are just restricting the knowledge and most important thing is do not chain the dog at all this is my pug actually tommy he's a very naughty dog here and there everywhere he wants to be with me so they listen to whenever I'm talking on phone, whatever I'm doing, he's listening. He also throws tantrums when he listens to somebody. He thinks that I'm talking on phone for more time and not uh, uh, talking to him. Then he, uh, he shows some anxiety attacks also. So another thing is that chaining the dog doesn't make any sense. Why you want to keep one member of the family chained? That is not right, right? And he sometimes people think the, uh, the duty of dog is just guarding. Don't you, even if the dog is throughout the house roaming around, it's not that he is not guarding. He has the, you know, his ears are always there if anybody is there at the gate or any corner of the house. So no need to chain them. In fact, they uh, suffer, you know, they feel they are not happy. Nobody, it is loss of freedom. There are some concepts like um, uh, in animal welfare, like uh, the animal should be free from hunger, free from, um, uh, you know, um, uh, thirst. They should be free from any type of uh, pain, diseases. Then they should be free from even uh, they should have the in good enough space, uh, which is uh, which should be made available to them. And another thing is that you should not keep different type of animals which are predators or enemies of each other, known enemies, you know, because it's, it should not happen that you are gone out and one animal is going to eat up the other one or bite or fight or something. Now I have dogs and cats together, but they are there and, you know, we treat everybody equally 
and then they are getting along very well. And before you think of uh, accepting any pet in your house, the new member in the house, you have to understand different physical needs. Till now, whatever we discussed, some type of physical needs, but they also suffer from, they also have some mental needs. Like they should be looked after, they should be loved. Otherwise, they also have some anxiety uh, problems like separation anxiety and all which we, we are going to discuss. So they show some type of abnormal behavior. That means that time they are not, they are showing you like, you know, I'm not happy. I'm not comfortable when you're leaving the house, look, locking me inside the house. I keep howling because I'm not happy. Can we leave our one year old child in the house? locked up obviously it's going to cry they cannot take their own food sometimes people think that you know that particular type of feeder and this bowl uh, they bowl they keep and then think that the animal drinks enough you know, for food from that animal that's not the only need they have some mental needs also it is your decision in fact actually to uh, whether buy or adopt if you ask me i would always advise you for adoption but there are some because we really don't want to encourage these puppy mills because if you keep buying they will keep on producing more and more puppies and your your i don't know whether you have seen the way the animals are kept chained in the cages and they're just used for the breeding purpose and you know twice they come in heat so what twice in a year pregnancies and then they come to us like you know because see the number of liter size they have in human being we have one or two babies they, they are having 10 11 12 and they you know keep on breeding more and more so that more number of babies they get and the type of care that which is required to you know the mother is nourishing the food nourishing the babies with their own blood so what what is the loss of calcium the loss of our blood from her body she has to by the time she's compensating with it the body is compensating you could they they have the, another delivery so it's very bad the hemoglobin levels are seen up to three and all hemoglobin you know so that is why we don't say that we should go for a um, you know buying but sometimes if somebody has got some dogs which are by chance bred in the house or you know you then you can uh, pick a buy because everybody doesn't get a chance to adopt also so if you have bought the puppy uh, then um, uh, normally people go ahead with the small size puppy because nobody goes and buys big size dog, right? So then that care is different. You should be ready for because many times they sell it off at very young age, one month and all, whether it is properly weaned from the mother, properly separated, whether they are able to cope up with the type of milk that you are or milk formula because most milk formulas or replacer milk replacer formulas are very expensive. And uh, the, the type of uh, milk, which um, the quality of milk that the mother's milk, you know, means their mother's milk. With dog's milk, pH, uh, this um, uh, level standard of uh, uh, percentage of fat is 3%. And in um, cow's milk, it is 7 So obviously, you have to double dilute it and use. So certain care has to be taken because it's not the direct supplement, you know, means it's not, you know, compensatory for them even lactose resistance they suffer from so many things you know those complications should you should be ready with because their mother's milk and the milk you are providing is of cow's milk obviously sometimes buffalo's milk if you are providing even it is having going to have much more fat percentage right so all these things and obviously because it is separated from the mother and whether you are directly got it from the mother is different if you have got it through some shop or something then what type of infection they are carrying because they are not dewormed, they are not vaccinated, you know. So th that is another problem. I'm not saying the birth puppy which is adopted from the road or community dog or from the street dog, they are not getting infection, but that is as a your moral um, the, uh, responsibility. You are going to just uh, pick it up and you are ready to do whatever uh, is uh, to make it feel comfortable. That also may be unwell, but in both the cases, whether you buy or adopt, there it comes with the responsibility. And why uh, the animals we should adopt? Because the um, 
see everybody thinks of adoption but it, that also comes with the response you cannot just bring it in and uh, you know keep and then try to and now it's not uh, getting adjusted i'm going to leave it again on the road or something you cannot do like that first of all those are abandoned dogs either there are two three types of dogs which we find either on the street either they are abandoned or they are like with the inbreeding and all the breeders then they end up throwing them out or sometimes even the owners abandoned because the animals are suffering from some critical illness you know some kidney problem or some mineral diseases or something so uh, which they don't want to spend you know or sometimes of some viral infection like distemper canine distemper or gastro these things happen they don't want to have the mess in the house so they throw it in on the road because they don't want to they are not prepared to take that responsibility so they ultimately throw it on the road and uh, that is really not good and uh, another thing is that uh, the street dogs ultimately from where do they come they are either the abandoned dogs or sometimes the people owners they are not responsible owners many times you know they don't neuter their own dog and then they leave them on the road and basically many times you might be seeing that this for dog on the road is looks like a boxer or this one looks like a german shepherd these are the progeny of our own own owner's dog because they let them out and then it comes as a imposed pregnancy to the poor street dogs female dogs which are in hid so that is what one uh, uh, is one thing and another one more section i think we are going to take it separately also that is a community dog okay that also i'll get back to you so minimum when you take a dog you must know what is the life span average life span you know so if if for a pomeranian is going to be maybe 10 years or maybe 10 to 15 years but i have seen pomeranians also surviving for 25 years also because if they are really taken good care of then they survive but average life span so you will be prepared for you know all these years how you will make them their life comfortable what are the things you are supposed to do for them what is going to be feeding what see because at different stages of life everybody has got different needs when we very very young we needed milk or certain uh, easy to digest food then the food quality food um, uh, even quantity everything depends you know and they don't have more of social life also although nowadays uh, there are some um pet friendly hotels or you know so people have started even i take my pets out we take it in our car we take uh, take them for a round we take them for uh, uh, even uh, hotels also so they have some grooming centers where you can visit so let them also enjoy but that lifespan if you are real a responsible owner then you can go ahead with that and uh, another one more thing which you know, the professor uh, just pointed out i would like to tell you some people not not so much in india but animals are really uh, very useful for as a therap therapeutic for a, a companion you know abroad you must have definitely seen the lifespan of a human being is more and uh, so they they prefer to have animals along with they guide them even how doctor said just now it is um, uh, the way uh, the, the how you know every whole day of there is uh, connected with this uh, companion of theirs when they have anxiety attacks this dog is trained they are trained in that particular way they are the trained uh, in a lifetime of that person maybe two or three uh, dogs they get because the lifespan of the dog is small and uh, human beings in more but they have so they show such a good uh, this thing responsibility when this dog shows responsibility towards their owner you know they are really responsible if you have seen any companion animal or this therapeutic uh, animal you know you can see the difference you know and even sometimes you know those uh, Uh, autistic children's uh, children or um, old age peer home uh, we take the dogs which are trained you know and the smile you can see on the faces of children or those who are you know terminal in the terminal stages of cancer and all 
they are really so happy you know these small children or a person of any age you know they forget their pain and they just start playing with uh, these uh, animals and uh, uh, even the old um, uh, old human geriatric people patients also are very very happy looking after uh, these animals for some time so we arrange for some frequent visits um, to the such type of hospitals so you people if you really love animal you can be a volunteer you can just train some of one of one or two of the small puppy from any of the ngo and all uh, even you can uh, take them for a round and all regularly so they are comfortable with you and animal doesn't bite at attack on its own the weirdest it is the weirdest thing i i really hear there's some reason they are not stupid they have their brain they understand whom to attack or not and again they have like they are like how i said the mental thing you know they also think over you know whenever any person comes they smell it when they find that this person is new it cannot be it can be threat to the fowls or something it's a protecting nature then the way how you approach them you know you sit with them you pat them you make allow them to smell these are the things uh, if you do then if they find a friend in you they will stop barking at you which you might have seen or even when you enter the house you know they are busy smelling you wagging the tail and all Uh, so these are the things you have to you know i really hate when for the small children also people say that oh there is a dog go kick him go throw stone at stone at him some people really pour hot water sometimes on the road side you know the, that hot tea or oil anything you know and they meet with so horrible accidents also the dogs because they are scared they don't have their own house or then shelter where they can go and hide so these these things we have to because we are also responsible people responsible citizen and right as the, your professor had uh, to write in the beginning animals are there to live with us right from the beginning always they were animals you know they are uh, always there and we don't have any right to uh, you know uh, uh, destroy their life or to kill them even for the because the population is increasing in human being what are the ways what we accept you know there are ways of controlling the prop population so in case of animals also we have to control the population in the most human way that we are going to talk afterwards yeah these are another things which we have to we we mentioned it in between but uh, the age of the animal obviously because the type of, as i said different stages they need their requirements are different then if we are going it is adapted then they are they are there with some type of habits or some you know they their methods of their way of living life is different and it is bought and then for a small puppy you have to train it and the habits are definitely different but there are that you should not get scared that the dog i have seen that you know that they somebody brought labrador and they kept on saying the dog keeps biting keeps why it's not biting it's a like chewing they were they're trying to chew because um, teething time right because they also have the um uh, the uh, uh, you know just like our human children get the uh, temporary teeth replaced by the permanent teeth right so when they are born they come with very tiny uh, teeth if you are seen and they need to chew otherwise if they, they chew on the you can give some them chewies or they can chew able toys but uh, you cannot just keep saying that they are biting if you they you know help them to understand with a roll of paper you have to just give uh, you know show them that you know uh, don't hit them as such but they will understand actually animals are very intelligent it's not that only particular breed is intelligent all the animals are so intelligent that they understand the change in the tone of the owner or the person with whom he they are dealing with so and this is my dog <laughs> this is she's goldilocks <laughs> okay next one yeah whenever you now uh, we are going to see whenever you are decided now that you are going to have some pet dog and you are decided from where how what size for you know for everything you have decided then at home 
what are you going to prepare before the animal you know they need some so there is a feeding bowl which you know need watering bowl and why i have mentioned size say shape height of the bowl because people don't know you know sometimes in a small bowl they feed it to the big dog you know you need to know the quality of and quantity of the food that is required so you can measure it that way then the shape why i have mentioned because you know some dogs have brachycephalic breasts that means their face is punch face flat face and some dogs have got a pointed um, um, mouth right so uh, in that case they need a little deeper ball and uh, otherwise the other dogs need a shallow ball so like a pug or uh, any flat uh, boxer they need and height means at the height where you know at the height where you are supposed to keep the ball you know some dogs can eat slowly and they will lap it you know small ones and all. but you, if you see boxer or bulldog or sometimes uh, um this golden retriever labrador they eat so hurriedly and in between they you know inhale lot of and even orally also they take in lot of uh, air and then they suffer from gastric distension and all okay so in that case you have to keep it you feed the dog at a, at a height where it is comfortable standing position also you can you get a particular type of stands where those balls should be kept it that particular feeding bowl and watering bowl can be kept at that level then uh, the food what you need when they, obviously it's a puppy uh, the pin winning formula you can go ahead with or uh, uh whatever the the if the animal has been already weaned then you can go with semi solid you you get some type of jellies also jelly food sometimes you can go with the dry food in the earlier stages you have to soak it in water and give even a homemade food also you can go for then they the even curd is a good for guys also good so you can refer to the dietitian or you can refer to the doctor who can advise you about this then the nutrient requirement also that is what what are the you know they also need uh, the balanced diet right protein fat vitamins minerals uh, everything they need carbohydrates all the things because it's not that they just keep sitting you know in fact that is also important aspect one more thing is they need to have lot of exercise not lot of you know young puppies they need less exercise again a breed wise you know you need to give exercise to them otherwise their bones and growth is not that proper okay and ad lib water means lot of water whenever the animal is thirsty it should get a get water because men you see you may not give the food always you know because then they they have a sort of appetite they eat a lot but water definitely they need whenever they want and you should give ad lib water to any animal many times people just give small bowl of it and they keep on complaining oh that spills the water sometimes they play with it what they have to also play no they are also babies so they also want to play so but that doesn't mean you should not give water and there are particular type of bowls which come with the sticking and type of um, rubber lining so that may not spill so you have to give a lot of water okay and another thing even the treats that we give you know whenever they do something good they listen to you they do something good you have to you know don't mess up then you have to give some treats then they are happy then small chunk like uh, things you get even chewing sticks are also very good chewing sticks not only are good for the teeth cleaning then it takes care of the teething problems because they are clean and proper if it otherwise is going to chew some furniture or is going to chew on the um any chappals or uh, shoes which have come from outside which is not even good for them okay so uh, chewies are also chewable toys or shoes uh, here baby because we are talking about the food you get chew sticks specially for that some type of medicated things even hides you get there are so many type of chew sticks you can try with and whenever the dog chews on the bone uh, or any chew stick it uh, uh, secretes more of saliva so there is a natural cleansing of the teeth also okay and you have to have a special bed and blankets you know bedding is a 
important for them because they, are, they can enjoy, they have their own space, you know. Whenever they are feeling bored of their human friends, they also should go and rest somewhere so they can enjoy. And uh, it's good to have their own bed, although when some people like to keep them along with them, Otherwise, um, you can have a separate bedding because, see, we love, we, everybody in our family are loving but the animals, but sometimes the guests, they may or may not love the having the smell of the dog or, you know, the fur sometimes if it is there because obviously molting is there every year, right? The fur, any animal or bird which has got fur or feathers, they are going to um, get um, replaced. We are not going to have the same um, hair throughout the life. And then the toys, toys everybody likes. No, who doesn't like toys? At any stage of life, we enjoy. And those animals are so proud to have their own toys, you know. They enjoy playing with it. They sleep with it, everything. Otherwise, they are going to take your toys and then may not be good for them. The toys are specially made for their use. I would like to know whether you are getting my things or I'm very fast. Can I get some response? Ma'am? Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma Go ahead. Yeah, it's, en it's entertaining. Huh? Very, very nice. Very nice. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. And another thing is now, whenever any pet is brought in the house, the major problem with the parents or, uh, you know, anybody will be bothered, obviously, about the urine and potty that they do in the house, obviously. So they, we get certain type of potty training kits because small puppies, if you leave it out, first of all, they are not going to, you know, they cannot lead with a leash. Collar and leash you can keep for them, but it takes some time to walk with you or they don't understand when to do the potty or urine, right? So best way is to start at home, uh, you know, uh, uh, potty training kit, how it works, there is a spray and along with the spray, uh, you can spray it on any piece of paper on any cloth and keep it at the place where you want them to do the potty. So, so to start, uh, start with, okay? And um, afterwards they start doing that. And then another uh, better uh, version of it is, I prefer is some training pads. You know, they come as a rectangular sheet, of um, uh, those are rectangular sheets of uh, this um, what they call it as uh, diapers but they are not tied on the animal's body it's just like this rectangular bed which you can see in the picture right now similar to that actually we should have it so but that is uh, you know on one side um, you know the, uh, the upper side is absorbable actually that white thing a any pad or any uh, diaper how it has the absorbable part on the upper side and the lower side is the plastic or nylon whatever they have some non-absorbable material so uh, animals sometimes go and rest also on that sometimes they, they particularly do the potty and uh, um, uh, this urine on that and uh, uh, still if by chance if they do somewhere else um, it has to be thoroughly cleaned with uh, disinfectant and you know to avoid them to do the we get something like um, urine repellent spray you know because then they don't you go and you if you put little there you know or or if they do do it by chance on sofa or on your bed you put that urine repellent spray so in in that spray uh, smell with that smell your dog will smell it and it won't do it over there you know so there are another different different ways how you can and in, it's a matter of few days now where our baby comes with all the trained you know they also are going to use the diapers for a few years abroad many times they use diapers for two two three three years so they need to be taken we have to consider them as a baby only and obviously one see it's a, it's a very lucky thing see the god has given them gift that they grow very fast their age span lifespan in case of dogs you know it's seven times um, than the human now if i'm 35 years then their age is seven years so me and the dog is at the uh, five years since it's the same so five year dog is 35 I'm not 35, I'm 52, <laughs> but I'm just explaining the seven times is the um, age of the human. So they grow very fast. They understand very fast. You will never find a dog, you know, who cannot eat himself. You cannot, you know, small puppies. Uh, they need uh, very rarely, if really they are given you at very some small stage or they or you know, 
they really need neonatal care they need the, they need the bottle and all feeding and all otherwise they become independent so fast and by the age of one and a half year they are fully grown dogs you know mature dogs so their adulthood is also so fast compared to ours Okay, at home, uh, actually some things you have to keep at home, like collar, leash. Those are the basic things because legally also it's not right to take the dog out without a uh, collar and leash because it's our pet. We don't want to want it to be the, a nuisance for people, you know, because sometimes some children are scared. Sometimes it may attack somebody. Sometimes the dog may find the movements of someone uh, suspicious or the bags that they are carrying or sometimes some poor people are walking on the road who are carrying something, you know, um, uh, the garbage picker and all they go and attack. So it's always better that you carry your dog on the collar and leash. Whenever they take it, uh, you are taking them out for rounds. So mainly that also you need to decide how many times the dog should be taken out. That is the common problem uh, people have. That because they say that it goes out and it comes home and then urinates and difficult. See, normally what we advise whenever they eat food. See, early in the morning is one one thing. You know, slowly when they become habituated, you know, they make you, you know, to get up and you okay to take me for a round. I need because everybody needs to go to, for urine and potty in the morning. So that is what they do morning. And for the puppies, I advise at least four times in a day. Uh, because their stomach capacity and holding capacity of the digestive tract is obviously less. Whatever they eat in some time, they want to throw it out. So we uh, advise that for puppy minimum for four times or every two, three hourly if it is possible. And uh, for the adult dogs, twice in a day at least, but preferably early morning is one and that time and um, after the meals, uh, is better because when their stomach is full and all, then they, if you are seen uh, carefully, normally they urinate or defecate that time. And uh, it's always good to keep them, uh, you know, so then your house remains clean. Okay, whenever you bring the animal at home, um, what we are supposed to first do it is. Uh, take it to the uh, doctor and you have to keep it in ma'am uh, mind that whenever a uh, puppy come puppy or any uh, adult dog also if you bring it takes seven to eight days to adjust to your new their new surroundings your house is a new surrounding for them new people are there uh, new food is there it should get adjusted so i advise always the food also what you need to do is uh, give is the same food you continue with what is already given with the previous owner or whatever if you are aware of the same thing you have to or easily digestible food whatever your food you introduce in the beginning stage continue for the seven days sometimes people say morning we give milk afternoon we give something else then suddenly we bought the dry food then we want to start with jelly food we want to give boiled egg seasonally certain things also are good or not i'm not at all saying the whole home cooked food is bad or something home cooked good food is also good but in a very hot season don't give give too many eggs okay no don't give too much of uh, chicken or non because sometimes people think that these, they are carnivores so we are supposed to keep on giving lot of non veg so right from beef and meat what are they call it uh, red meat uh, all, all the mutton beef chicken what and what not they give to a small poor puppy who has really not developed the digestive tract even to absorb milk other than their own mother's milk so uh, all these things you have to go to the doctor and understand uh, you know they the doctor checks you the weight of the animal the generalites uh, you know other than us main problem with the dogs is the fur the whole body is covered with the fur so that also he will check how the grooming how many take times uh, you are supposed to give bath uh, deworming is another see our food and water is covered you know always so we eat it from a fresh food and all but in animals the food and water is not covered it's left in the bowl right so whatever cleanliness we take care of you know unless you immediately remove it and all but that's not possible every time so in that case uh, and even when they go out they keep on smelling right 
so there are always chances of getting uh, parasite any type of external parasite or the internal parasite both the ways right so if they are going to lick uh, you know small puppies they go out and pick up any stone pick up any piece of uh, any any type is they which they get attracted towards you know even in the bone piece or in whatever they find which crow has thrown or whatever so they there are chances even they smell the potty also of another animals so you must be knowing because you are all science student you must be knowing one where they get the worms also right uh, so deworming has to be done at particular duration because when we start with we start it at the age of 8 weeks in one and half month of their age and then frequently there are um, dosages of deworming and even for the adult uh, dog we give it once in 3 months so deworming is a very important thing you know many a times uh, the animal is not eating maybe and vomiting or something it might be worms and there are specific worms of the animals other than you know you might be thinking some people just go for broad spectrum deworming medicine which is normally you know they go to the um, our um, pharmacy and just go with any albendazole mebendazole any other you know broad spectrum but what about the specific worms that they are getting they are not taken care of right and always there should be repeat after you know if you are regularly doing it's fine but for the puppy when you are doing we, and it is dosage is again as per the body weight so you have to because people don't take it because one tablet for 10 kg body weight if your puppy is 5 kg and you are giving a whole tablet so isn't it going to be a over dosage for it isn't it going to have the loose motion or the side effect okay and otherwise sometimes 30 kg dog they'll give only one tablet that's a, again we are thing it's not going to have any effect then they come up again like i just went to the person uh, the pharmacy and took it but the dosage should is also important thing so deworming is another important part and then uh, you know they get the truffle dry coat and all that is also sometimes the worms are there you can see the pot bellied appearance pear shape abdomen so that is also many times with the worms so and you can get uh, you know the dog can show the signs of blood in the stools or loose motion amebiasis you know all type of you must be knowing all the internal uh, parasites and another there is a myth that there are parasites only in the digestive tract you know the people think is only intestines only intestines no there are in the kidney they are in the heart they are in the brain luckily we don't have um, heart worm so common but abroad there they give the um, um, worms a medicine even for the heart worm okay and you must be knowing that sometimes these worms are transmissible uh, you know some other they it may not have the same uh, this thing but they have some other other um, side effect or effects on the human this thing like in the cattle so those worms have you know have problem in the human being dogs also and our children are you know to be taught or we should also always should wash the hands when we deal with their potty or urine or when you give bath it should be properly taken care of you know disinfection should, because we should also you know now with uh, all this corona and all people are becoming aware of the personal hygiene and all also that is important and the vaccination schedule you know right from the puppy age now i'm not going to deal with uh, you know the, do if you want i can say but there are different type of vaccine at different age just like for our children and it's not to be given at the only at the age when they are small they need to be repeated that people don't uh, understand sometimes you know people come with a 11 year dog and then they say that the dog is bitten by some other dog uh, or sometimes a, a, a another complainant comes to the ask the, 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 this dog bit my dog what should i do when we ask for record they say we had given we had given but when it was given when the puppy was 3 month or 2 month old after that the immunity uh, is not there the immunity is for one year some in vaccines uh, for 6 months also so the type of vaccine so whenever you come to a doctor normally we give a, a booklet in which one medicine is to be given means today which one what was the dose what was the deworming medicine because you must be knowing about the resistance also that is developed right if the same medicine you keep using right you must be knowing that like how antibiotic resistance is there worm medicine resistance also 
uh, sometimes established. So, and again, there are different type of forms. So you have to sometimes microscopically get the stool check and sometimes maybe isospora or whatever type of forms because you must, you know it. That's why I'm just telling that uh, that also is important. That also is done in animals. And um, this uh, after deworming, the effect of the vaccine also is better, you know, because what we are doing, we are injecting the antigen and we want the dog to develop antibodies. So if it is completely healthy and normal, that time only you need to get it vaccinated. Sometimes people think, no, today is the day the dog has got high fever, but I need to get it done. This is not done. We are not there just to, you know, for the namesake uh, vaccine. Vaccine is a very important aspect. And just like how we give so many vaccines for our, our children, there are vaccines, so many viral infections they suffer from like distemper, canine distemper, hepatitis, leptospherosis, parainfluenza, parvo. Corona also is one, but their type is different. So please be not scared of this. People keep saying that, uh, you know, there are many people there abandoning animals, containing, considering that maybe the corona type, we always give the corona type 1 and type 2 vaccine, combined vaccine for years together, but none of the human beings suffered from corona. The strains are different. Now you must be aware of the strains are always different. We are also taking different vaccines for and obviously the species is different. You know, the dog, even the worms are also uh, particular species, canis and the canine species is there, right? So that particular uh, uh, worm is not going to affect us. Uh, OK, but Corona is also not transmissible to human beings from animals. OK, so the vaccination schedule and Please uh, just get mentioned and obviously doctor will mention what is the date of revaccination? When is the booster dose? And in case of anti rabies, because we, you know, everybody is dealing with the dog. If we don't have the history of the animal, you know, normally the maternal immunity, they develop with uh, rabies till the age of three months. But they have it, maternal immunity, they have from the mother till the age of three months. If the mother is vaccinated with anti rabies got it so till three months if you don't do it is fine but uh, if the mother's history you have vaccination record otherwise i prefer that you give the anti rabies vaccine for, um, by three months and obviously these are another things the scheduled doctor will give you and all of them need to be done okay and the medical advice, obviously, if the doc, a doctor finds any of those eye discharge, like it depends on the breed, it depends on the type of exposure, even if, uh, um, if, if the pug is there or a boxer, which are exophthalmic breeds with brachycephalic and exophthalmic, if you're putting the AC on, obviously, they're going to get the cough cold, right? So because sometimes people think that these are imported breeds, you know, they think. So they think that all the other breeds uh, should get, uh, you know, only the mongrel breeds don't need AC. Sometimes people really need that they, the dogs are happy with AC. But it's not that, you know, they suffer from all the problems that we suffer from. If you find some nasal discharge, you please ask the doctor. If you find some eye discharge, these are the small, small th things, but these are the initial clinical symptoms. And sometimes these are the predisposing cause factors which we are creating, you know, uh, so that, uh, you know, there is a particular resistance level, right? Beyond that, then they start getting infected. Because if the nasal acromel duct get blocked, then obviously infection starts developing. But who blocked it? Why? You know, all these problems, they, you know, that's why proper management you should think about. Even in the car, how to carry the animal in the car, how to avoid the anxiety. I have seen people transporting with, even I have transported by my animals uh, by um, air also, but uh, we took it care. I never keep it in that um, uh, section where they can keep it in the cargo. I take a particular, uh, you know, uh, permission from the um, authorities to carry along with me and all. So because I have seen, I have seen people coming, crying, you know, the animals suffered from shock during the transit and died. But when they came all the way, you know, from Goa to Mumbai, also the dog died. You know, so otherwise I prefer I, I drive all the way from the, the Goa to Mumbai and, you know, take proper halts, stay with some uh, pet friendly hotels and take care of them. 
why why we we do certain types of things when our children also have got anxiety and even they get a time to go out so there is no harm because this is a one of our pa uh, family member we can't afford to lose it you know get dumping it in somewhere cargo services it's a life you cannot bring it like that yeah how you when being suffer from all the you must be being um, from the science background you must be knowing that human beings also suffer from all type of viral bacterial fungal parasitic infection and there are many more but um, viral and all you are taking care with the means uh, obviously there are different things like the uh, you know uh, no no the uh, type of viral infection if you get a chance you can give as a prophylactic doses you can give but uh, sometimes you know why the time it comes to it it is uh, already infected you know in that case you have to treat it uh, uh, because it, what to do the animal didn't have sufficient uh, resistance power by the time it has caught it then bacterial obviously mainly skin problems also they have lot of uh, skin problems they get and skin problems there are thousands of skin infection sometimes people want to know what is this sometimes it might be allergy allergy also of uh, is of so many things and it may go away afterwards sometimes exposure to anything can cause it you know even the see weather change weather change also makes the skin dry when it is dry if you are not putting anything soothing or hydrating liquid or well any type of cream then obviously they are going to scratch it they keep on scratching or rub their body against something and then obviously the skin gets secondary infection so these are the small small things and those early signs you have to find out uh, and um, you know get, take it to the doctor parasitic signs are also the fungal you can make out with the you know the whatever type of fungal infection they get the you need to take it to the doctor obviously and get the medication done parasitic as i explained for the endo endoparasites as well as for the exo parasites uh, are mainly visible i they are visible also many a times you can see the ticks and fleas and mites they are uh, practically you can see it and endoparasites you can get them checked with the stool if it is not getting recovered in spite of giving the deworming medicine okay a normal thing is if we are regularly deworming there is no issue but sometimes people say my body my dog i'm feeding everything but he is not getting weight it is very thin it has got pot bellied appearance it has got uh, blood in the stools and all then maybe you are not getting giving the specific uh, specific type of um, um, and uh, ectoparasiticidal medicine okay or uh, endoparasiticidal um, means deworming medicine so in that case you can get uh, the stool checked and according to get the treatment done in case of ectoparasiticides means external parasite which commonly are ticks fleas uh, uh, mites and all uh, skin scrapings are done in case of if they are uh, really microscopic like you might have seen some dogs completely lose the hair completely shed the hair right and um, they look uh, very in uh, too much in horrible condition and you know complete alopecia hair loss is there or sometimes around the eyes they have these problems so all these type of things you can take care of with uh, local application uh, um, there are some local applications sometimes you can go ahead with some bath medicated baths sometimes you need some experts to uh, do the proper grooming or uh, uh, another thing is there are some injections also available for that and now this grooming we have a lot of things we have uh, already taken care of so and grooming uh, uh, grooming people people sometimes ask what is it for normal nail clipping of nail uh, ear cleaning is also important for dogs we do it ourselves who is going to do for them so we get a particular type of nail clipper and uh, then then we can uh, get it done um uh, that it is better that uh, some expert does it the doctor's assistant or something uh, so nail clipper and but if you are really very confident you can also get the uh, Uh, nail clipping and get them used to it you know once in 3 months at least you should get because if you are giving enough of exercise to the animal then uh, the nails are um, uh, getting uh, you know uh, 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 filing filed or you can have a file nail file also 
you know sometimes people say that the animal is uh, so scared it doesn't allow it cries but you know you get something like elizabeth collar to put around the neck and don't show him or you can just put him like that and the other person does uh, you know it let it be a nice experience for them you know it's something grooming it's it's not that something painful or something uh, we are this is my cat actually she he, he is um, a full punch face cat and he keeps on getting this eye discharge and all but on sunday when we give the bath he resists it he is trying to hide from me and just trying to request me not to go away he doesn't like bath then the eye discharge the grooming everything he is still a young kitten so uh, and another thing is you know uh, when we do the grooming we do couple of things is um, hair cutting which is important see hair on the body are there uh, throughout uh, in case of animals so daily grooming uh, daily brushing i'm talking about if they get particular type of combs so daily brushing is one important thing then when you are brushing that time if you can see the this type of brush uh, that they are using you know the ticks eggs of the ticks are also removed another way is um, it gives a very good cutaneous blood circulation if the cutaneous blood I means skin circulation of blood is improved then the quality of fur will be good then whatever loose hair have to be removed obviously they are not going they have already come out of the hair follicle we are not going to stick them inside again or anything right so even that removes that uh, matted hair or whatever is dirt in the hair so in that case you need not keep on giving bath every now and then you know if you are doing uh, regular for uh, grooming and another thing is uh, looking about in case of looking after the fur is here uh, once in a year in as i explained any animal or bird is going to have um, um, a replacement of the fur so they are going to have uh, hair loss to some extent but if it is beyond certain acceptable limits you can show it to the doctor then uh, you can um, uh, go ahead with certain things like see sometimes there are uh, people keep giving only non veg or in, you know they don't take care of um, dietary requirement of the for maintenance vitamin a e or whatever are the necessary requirement or uh, omega 3 fatty acids and all you know so in that case uh, either they can be replaced in the food in the diet or the, you can go ahead with some medicine medic, uh, medicines which can be given orally or this grooming can be done in a different ways and obviously when there is a skin infection what is the root cause of the you know loss of fur so in uh, why i went into so much detail because grooming is one important aspect in case of animal maintenance in house and the ticks also acha Yeah, we can have the next. Yeah, yeah. This is one more. Uh, see, till now you are all clear about. Can you please? Everybody, please answer. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma uh, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. So now we are entering into one important uh, query that people always have. They have the dog. they they keep uh, whether to breed them what age we should breed them how many times they are going to have their estrus um, uh, cycle how many days it is going to uh, uh, stay and when uh, whether it is going to uh, bleed like uh, human uh, whether we are supposed to use some sanitary pads whether we are supposed to use some uh, type of diapers they come with uh, in case of female dogs Uh, uh they come in heat normally by the age of 7 months but again as i said it's as per the breed size sometimes till 10 months and also they don't come in heat but so uh, you can expect the uh, stress cycle by the age of 7 months till around 12 13 months also so that's the first heat and as i said earlier once in 6 months they have but it's not that exactly on the 6 months it she has to have okay so normally two heats they have in a year okay so that is one then their estrus cycle is normally for 3 or 14 days so that is also is divided into proestrus estrus metaestrus diestrus and they don't show so much pronounced signs of it 
but with the signals the male can like you know with the discharge is zero sanguineous it's not going to be bloody as such you know so it's not going to stain so much but sometimes if it is a heavy flow sometimes you may find but normally animals lick and clean it so there is no big harm like you know if you are keeping you know when people always prefer to have male because they think that the females are going to bleed but then they you why don't you get them operated then you can get them uh, you know spayed the type of surgery which we do in case of female dog to remove the ovaries is called ovarectomy to remove the uterus is called uh, hysterectomy and i prefer to remove uh, both the things ovaries as well as uterus which is called as ovario hysterectomy or i'll tell you the reason if the ovaries are only removed okay then the uterus remains intact right so ovaries are removed animal may not come in heat right but sometimes if a small piece of um, uh, this thing uh, ovary is there then still they show the signs you know very minute piece also okay because nowadays many times laparoscopic and different type of surgeries are done it's not done by the open surgery open surgery is the best way open method that's what i mean and then in that case um, um, the ovaries are removed but the uterus is there and you know when the animals uh, yeah, in in case of uh, female whenever they sit the uterus uh, or vulva is open so there are chances of uh, entering the infection inside right and then uterus is ultimately a um, uh, bag like structure so whatever infection enters in it remains inside and that we call it as pyometra so pyometra um, uh, it happens and then you may or may not be able to identify it because 70% of the cases are closed pyometra you know the external os of the uterus remains closed and uh, which is going to open after 6 months so you can uh, you know think of how much uh, infection remains in inside and 30% are open in that case they keep throwing pus outside okay so that is pyometra we want to avoid so we should remove the uterus also then another way if you remove only uterus and keep the ovaries then they are going to keep getting cycle uh, cycle and then there is going to be the mating and another problem so these are the two important things which you should take care of you know i think ovary hysterectomy is the best way but nowadays people um, go with uh, whatever uh, option or available with them or okay and um, in case of male dogs also uh, we have to get them desex because it is becoming easy to manage that's what people think but it's obviously obviously the dog which is because they get attracted whenever any another female you know when you are going out for a round and the animal keeps runs away you know with the behind any of the dog so that is also very embarrassing for people many times sometimes this type of uh, unwanted pregnancy which is imposed on the stray dogs that happens with this type of dogs which are not d6 by the you know sometimes people say no we don't want to sometimes people think that if the male dog is uh, d6 then it's going to be very uh, you know docile it's not going to bark it's not going to attack people want to have attacking barking dogs it see actually whenever we do this castration surgery even if it is a close open method or vasectomy whatever in case of closed may this um, open surgery may what we may uh, do, do we remove the over uh, we remove the, the testicles as well as vas deferens in case of mens but testicles are ultimately going to re release the testosterone they are not there but in the brain you must be aware of anterior pituitary gland which also releases uh, hormones to some extent so it's not that the animal is going to be like completely quiet and all and that obesity what people think no that the animal study sterilize it becoming obese i got two stray dogs at home mongrel dogs at my home they are perfectly all red thin and uh, you know very active because we kept them active you have to provide them exercise you have to take them for a round exercise and whatever right so then they become healthy their diet also should be otherwise if you keep them just like then they they will see sit like a lazy person and you know they will keep on putting on weight even in case of females also no the ovaries as well as uterus completely it is removed they also tend to put on 
weight, you know, but it is you who can manage with the, you know, nowadays the, the particular diets also are there for obesity, just like we get a different type of diet diets, you know, just like in human being, there are uh, for any type of critical illnesses like heart problem, kidney problem, uh, liver problem, you get specific food, just even similar to that, even for obesity management, there is a food available. Okay, and even like um, um, youngsters, even for the young, uh, you know, pregnancy, during pregnancy, whatever medication is to be given during um, uh, uh, neonatal care, what feed to be, there are different type of nutrition industries really very well developed in uh, animals. No, we will. We have it, no? Yeah, see, uh, as I mentioned that you need to know the physical as well as uh, mental uh, problems that animals deal with. So till now we learned whatever way we can make your animal comfortable in their physical needs. You know, give good food, good water, everything. But we go out and we keep them locked in the house. What are they going to do? They are going to howl. They are going to keep, keep barking. So why do they do that? They have the separation anxiety, right? So they, then people say that they bark. It's barking means, well, has anybody taught them that uh, you are not supposed to bark, bark when owner is not there? They will bark, obviously, if somebody is there. Uh, and if there is a, if somebody is there in the house, it's good for them. Or some people go to that extent that they get, get the debarking surgery done, you know, the cords, uh, the voice cords uh, with the voice cord. That is such a cruel way. But uh, it's always better that some person who is a caretaker should be there. And for some time they sleep, but even that anxiety problems they also suffer from. Even when you get ready, they can smell it. They start, you know, they, they become, ner become nervous. Sometimes we go out for holidays also. That time also they have a problem. So in that case, proper care, you know, keep some caretaker with them or you can keep uh, them in any of the good kennels, you know, or some type of services, pet services, you can keep them. So all these signs which we have mentioned, the animal keeps barking, howling, or they, you know, pant a lot that time. Or some dogs, they can start shivering because they want to stop you uh, from going, you know. Then these are all some, you know, they are, there are some signs that they are showing. Sometimes even you the door, open the door, the animal just runs away, you know, because it wants to come with you. Sometimes even in the house, you can see that the animal is hiding somewhere in a corner. That's a type of psychological problem they are showing because the psychological means that's a anxiety. Sometimes they, you know, they don't return home also because they have this uh, some past experience. Somebody might have left with somebody and then they never came to uh, take them back or something. Even digging, you know, they start digging. For a female, when they do the digging, it is for the babies. They want to make some comfortable pet. But digging is another uh, sign that they show. Um, so then guarding, uh, see, uh, another thing you have seen, the animal keeps on guarding their food. You know, they don't allow you, if you see, you know, they don't allow you to pick it up. You know, some type of chewy, some types of uh, even good uh, food which they like, they want to. But guarding of food is also their psych behavioral problem. And uh, even sometimes, you know, when a, a, a dog has got suffered from somebody, you know, if he has hit them or, you know, in vehicle, that particular vehicle, you can see they chase, you know, if they are met with a fracture, you know, they depend, remains in their memory and they start chasing that vehicle. That particular you think that suddenly this dog comes and chases because it has got some memory also regarding that. Even the guarding of food is also very important, but these things slowly you can take care of. Abroad, we have got a very good uh, subject, you know, I've seen in Washington DC that um, uh, animal behavioral science is very well established, you know, and uh, the animal behavioral scientists, they really, you know, understand the language. If there, if you go for adoption, even of the abandoned dogs, there's a very nice room, uh, you know, where they, 
just leave the uh, person who has come to adopt the person who is um, who wants to give you know both the underdog the animal whatever whichever animal you know they leave you in the room and the way how you are communicating and it's not only that you have to go and say okay i like this animal i want this that's not the way the animal has to accept it it's not only with one way of communication only one round of communication they decide they decide give call you again see apart from your home checkup and your capacity to do it whatever you pay them for adoption whatever you know they are guaranteed that you will get the neutering done you will do the vaccination no it's a responsibility nowadays you know just like how we have aadhar and there they have social social security also some of the uh, states have come up with that the states or maybe nations have come up they get visa they get uh, you know even they have there are so many rights even in india you know we have something called uh, you, and we have a complete subject of veterinary jurisprudence if you children also want to do it you can go ahead you know any time you can just go through there are certain rules and regulations for everything like even in the stray dogs how to look after when to get them operated how to get them vaccinated you are not supposed to pick up one dog from here and go and leave it in the another area they should be in the same area there are some rules and regulation because obviously if the dogs on the other area are going to attack him attack him right and he is completely new in that area so he may not be able to take the food you know find the food also for him okay so there are many search will slowly afterwards we can do go ahead this is yeah this is what we have already seen say whatever um, Um, whenever you bring any dog into home, whatever care, but that care again depends on different stages. Now, I think this we are we are putting mainly for the female when you are get a female. Uh, so at the same time of pregnancy, this this is particular because we have already learnt about the puppy stage. Uh, then the, that's the growth stage. Then there will be a maintenance stage. So you no, know, so the feeding, care, everything is different. Growth stage, it is different because whatever food you are giving uh, is going to get used up for the growth. But maintenance stage also needs enough food and uh, all the care because there the even diseases if you see at certain age, uh, the till six months they are more exposed to certain type of infection. So it's like that. And now this we are coming up with the. Uh, pregnancy actually this mainly basically we wanted to show for the pregnancy whenever female is uh, expecting that apart from that maintenance diet you have to give some pregnancy ration you have to provide some certain pregnancy care also you know they need a, a pregnant dog you are not going to keep in the main uh, hall or something because what happens whenever they have a natural tendency to keep barking or or you know Uh, and there somebody comes so we don't want her uh, to get uh, uh, you know aggressive or to change her temperament at that and even they have that some certain, certain maternal instinct so let her be in a cool, cool comfortable zone in the, especially in our bedroom or wherever she is comfortable provide her with a proper bedding and whenever is you know that uh, it is uh, just two months of gestation period that they have and in that you can see the number of babies that they have so all the bones and everything of that all the body parts of those young puppies um, um, are getting developed inside her womb so she should get in a fresh she should get in a food um, enough of calcium and other supplements you know proper care and even deworming vaccination should be proper because so there is there are certain diseases which get transmitted from the parents to the offspring so we need to be careful for that also okay and this room should be ventilated properly ventilated clean uh, no ticks no uh, external parasite proper grooming because immediately after the delivery you can do only cleaning to clean up the blood and all but you cannot apply any anti tick spray or anti tick medication medication because the animal is going to be lactating and the puppies are going to be suckling till the age of 2 months normally what happens you know the female come in comes in heat every 6 monthly for then one when if she come uh, when she 
conceives at that time, two months goes in the gestation period, pregnancy period. Then two months at least for the weaning of the puppies, right? And then she hardly get two months and then again she comes in here and um, uh, people try to again get her mated. So it's advisable, preferably I won't advise too many pregnancies. So one in a lifetime enough if you really are there to uh, make sure all the babies get some good home or you look after them. See, actually looking after one puppy, one dog of yours is okay. But in case of one, if there are 10, and they are not going to remain puppies throughout their life, they are going to grow. So all the care you have to take for that, you know. So we are being a responsible owner, we should have a limited number, you know. That's what we are more into the population control, but in a humane way. We don't want to just kill the animals or abandon the animals or separate, uh, change it from this location to another. You know, sometimes people come to the NGOs or SPCAs coming and saying that, Madam, there are many animals, they keep howling at night. You know, we just want them to be thrown in another area. That's not the way, that's not the way how you can do it, right? Because then it's going to be nuisance to another area. Then those animals will fight. There are obviously existing, no area is without animals. And they are there before the time we came, you know. They have a complete right to be there and then there will be fights and you know that problem will be there. So uh, from our side what we can do that is what uh, we are going to just say. I'll just come to that also. Yeah, see another thing being a responsible owner you need to get your animal registered, uh, you know, certificate of uh, anti-rabies vaccine also is uh, given by the um, veterinarian and then you should get the license which should be repeat, uh, you know, frequently renewed also. So the site which is given on the screen, you can apply to the um, uh, municipal corporation. See, stray animals or any animal or anybody is on the road, that's the responsibility of municipal corporation. But uh, if you are looking after the animal, and, uh, and even your dog, your dog goes on the road, then you should have um, your ownership uh, record, right? And make sure that you, your dog is not spreading the, uh, you know, fetal disease of rabies, which is a zoonotic disease. It causes death in human beings also, right? And it is causing death in another dogs also. And sometimes, you know, rabies, I have seen, I have practically seen see the cases in the cases of rabies. In India, bad luckily, we have rabies. And in Mumbai or big cities, I have not seen that much. But when I went as the CEO of Goa SPC, at that time, I, I used to get, you know, week almost one, two, three, two, three dogs, you know, so because they have jungles and all that area, you know, where those monkeys and some other animals are also responsible for spreading. They bite. And you know, uh, bite the stray dogs, and then the stray dogs come and bite all those um, um, farm animals also. And it spreads like anything. I've seen human beings suffering and dying with rabies, you know, and the, nobody knows. You must know whether which dog in your community are uh, vaccinated. If your dog, that also every yearly it has to be vaccinated, please get it done. Check the immunity of the vaccine which your doctor has given and that time you should get it done because rabies is fatal. We should be responsible if your animal, sometimes it might remain carrier. Many times what people think, my dog is vaccinated. That doesn't mean it is not going to cause, uh, you know, the another dog if it bites. It depends on the virulence of the virus in the body of the dog who is attacking. Where do you know which stray dog has come in contact with uh, any other dog? You know, so dog bite is uh, should always be taken carefully. If you want, I can just briefly say about uh, how to take care of. We have time. OK, so whenever a dog bites, don't be scared. You have to just clear, uh, hold the wound under running water, clean it with carbolic acid so and just uh, you know let the blood and all go. These are the penetrating ones so they are going to be painful. That is what because their teeth are canine teeth right. So uh, it is going to be there. Pain, pain is going to be there but painkillers you can take but don't cover the wound you know when you have washed it then with carbolic acid so like a life boy and all are also and then some of the 
and your chlorhexidine will do our uh, saulon and all you can just clean it and then you can apply um, betadine cream on it it is a mild uh, irritant and it gets held up in 3 days but don't cover don't bandage the wound that is the only care people just get scared and if you don't have the history of any anti any rabies vaccination to be given, which is supposed to be given to the dogs if it is not there then within 24 hours you should get the vaccination done it's your vaccination right it is given on 0th 3rd 7th 15th 30th 60th and the last is 90th dose but normally a doctor will uh, you the human doctor will uh, see how much of uh, uh, wound is healed up or the signs and all then they decide normally 3 to 5 doses they give but um, advise it is advisable to uh, show it to the doctor within first 24 hours sometimes people come after a week and say now it's so much inflamed i i bandaged it i did this i did that but what where about within first 24 hours what did you do it should be done in first 24 hours okay so that is why the dose also if you say zeroth day it start from the zeroth day post exposure okay post bite what people commonly call right and uh, whenever you are coming in regular contact with like we veterinarians we are coming in contact so we take a vaccine that is, see there are two things no prophylactic vaccine is there to avoid uh, you know the, the disease coming into your body right and curative is another thing so post bite is a curative medication right and prophylactic means uh regularly to be on because we cannot keep taking any every time we get a dog bite or something normally we don't get dog bites but uh, we normally take it's our professional has that so we take it okay so be careful about that okay so uh, yeah no i know but whatever uh see much of the things actually we have already come uh, cleared when but see now i we just spoke about the pet dogs okay so everybody is not lucky enough that the family members will allow you to keep the dog at home right because everybody if is happy and they don't have any problem you are most welcome to take care but it's not that you should not be like saying that i never got a chance so you can have community dogs community dogs means say you stay in a locality uh, in a building so there if there are so small puppies or any dog is there instead of chasing it away you can just have a small shelter you, you yourself can have a small shelter at the corner of your you know inside the campus it guards your uh, locality that is one thing but Uh, even the normal things you can give the food water and all you can look after the community dog also okay you can provide see what a maximum it needs it needs food it needs um, um, water it needs shelter in the season wise like if it is cold hot or whatever and then you can have um, vaccination done deworming done Th this is it doesn't and you can share the responsibility you know and you will get a cute pet in your, of your own in your own community you can name him or her get them neutered that is another thing so that you know instead of uh, spreading the population and all uh, increasing the population spreading the uh, diseases see once you keep it clean and hygienic and all it becomes an example for the other people you know because that will reduce the people of uh, number of animals on the road somebody is looking after them somebody is providing shady uh, shades actually there are ngos doing this work but you know they they hardly get any grants even the municipal corporation has got also so many more things to do the to be done so instead if we look after them so it's a small type of community community work that you are going to do right and that is of your own liking i have seen jigisha also doing so much of work and my husband has practically seen Uh, Doctor Sami has all practically seen the way how they are looking after some street puppies, and they are concerned about it. And uh, there is a team of boys and girls who, you know, call us up, ask us about, then if needed, they bring it to the clinic, and they make sure that uh, they get the good food and water. There are many, many people you are who are, you know, uh, like how we also provide uh, medication. We provide some food now. In this Corona time. 
also there was such a huge problem you know people were not getting food they were abandoning the animals and there was hardly there was hardly anybody on the road so we will feed the dog so we were giving food for them so um, that's the thing so small small things even sometimes you can give some medicinal care also to the animals you can if you yourself cannot you can just uh, provide little funding or you if there is any ngo they don't have funds then you can little bit provide with uh, some medicinal aid or um, if vaccine or this thing any type of care or you know keeping food is also major issue with them you know so that also or you can uh, sometimes some people sponsor some type of surgeries see only spaying and castration are not the surgeries no they suffer from all the possible problems tumors even the stray dogs if you see they suffer from mineral granulomas you know they also suffer from everything the fractures you know eye problems so many wounds on the body okay but again the most important thing which i feel that you know ultimately today child is going to be a tomorrow citizen so we want to create good citizens who are going to be a really good person you know good caring person you know ultimately we get the degrees and all that's different that makes us polished but otherwise from our mind how you are how sensitized you are that is very you know you cannot see the pain and this thing because sometimes even i'm really what it why people think that the animals don't suffer from pain obviously they suffer from pain they also feel they also must be thinking about uh, what is going on around right so because any nation is known by the way it treats the animal is a very uh, is uh, really known to you so we should also try to make as it is we are lucky to have a huge sign our uh, own um, uh, uh, own nation but other than that whatever smallest thing you know even if you go to a ngo and you just take the animal out for a, you know round because they are there inside the limited restricted area they would also like like to take a small round with you okay another thing is animal welfare which is a big issue actually but um, uh, even animal cruelty is we have another then yes, let's I go know. to that This has been done. We don't follow. How come it's written? For, don't follow responsible. That is done. Okay. Sometimes people don't follow this responsible pet ownership. That is why they are. That that is what I explain. If the males are not neutered, not desex, then they are going to have come. You know, obviously people leave them out, and then they get mated with the street dogs, and the poor females on the road get infection. You get a. unwanted pregnancy then sometimes as i said the chronic when animal is chronic uh, this is then be then the uh, people abandon people so we should be a responsible on that abc ar means animal birth control and abc ar it is actually animal birth control anti rabies it's a yeah it's a, it's a carried out by all the ngos then there's zoonotic diseases we all discuss about some skin infections are there leptospirosis even rabies i say these are basically the diseases which are transmissible from the animals to the human being so we have to be controlling that but another thing is most important is garbage if as long as you are going to keep garbage open on the road side these animals are going to feed on that and they are going to survive like that so garbage management is also important animal but control is an is a, a, a we are uh, doing it when all the ngos and everybody does it in in fact um, any animal which is whose um, castration or spaying is done but this abcr is basically for the street and dogs from the animal welfare board of india we have set up some sop standard operating procedures uh, because many times people think these are stray dogs they don't feel pain so we have given some standard protocols how they should be caught they should be humane way of animal handling because they should not be just put with the held with that grasper what they call and pull they should be handled very we we have, we even conduct some good um, uh, workshops no from abroad uh, people come and they show what is the humane way of handling 
even at Sikkim, we have got very good center where, you know, they just carry, they just carry the animal. So uh, uh, that is the way on uh, There are butterfly hoops you can, what, what we call, you can make out how you uh, catch butterfly. No, that's the way very nicely sleeping dog can be caught very easily. And in that big uh, jhola like of type of things and you can bring it. Then the sudaning, uh, you know, it our Sikkim center and some of the centers I've seen, they put some sudaning, uh, music you know they really feel calm and quiet they don't think that they have come at some place where they, you know something horrible is going to because they feel they also sense the guilt since the death they you know if we don't i don't give the anesthesia to one dog in front of another because they don't understand so um, uh, that the animal is um, you know, dead or what has happened. So, and most important aseptic pro protocols. Then um, another thing is, um, uh, you know, aseptic protocols is right from the uh, shelter, then uh, surgical ta table, and then the, uh, you know, post, post and pre-surgical care until the time you release, even in the vans and all, whichever are carrying, and anesthetic protocols. These are very important. That's what we teach in these centers, animal birth control, and, and then they should be dewormed and given anti-rabies vaccine, and then they should be released. And it's not only we carry out the ABCR, at the same time, if it has got any fracture, any other tumor, any other skin infection, we take care of that also. Okay, most of these things we have already discussed. Um, how, how uh, as an animal lover, if you would like to, you know, get attached to any of these, um, help these animals, you know, you can have, uh, like you can learn certain things like that, um, as I said, uh, veterinary jurisprudence means the laws. There are some laws for uh, uh, cruelty management means, as I said, it's a vast of a topic. That's why I'm not taken. But you can go ahead with the veterinary jurisprudence. Then you can get attached to the NGO and whatever care they need. You know, you can help them out, giving bath, taking them around. You know, whatever care, or if they want some type of sponsorship, funding. You know, even for food, um, medication, anything. Then behavioral science is a very, very good uh, subject. Then one more thing I would like to say that humane way of animal handling, anybody, even sometimes I've seen the owners are scared of their own pets because they grow up, oh my God, this is going to happen. Sometimes owners are more scared that, uh, you know, when we are giving injection, they are <laughs> like jumping more. So in our case, many times veterinarian has to deal with, you know, owners more than the <laughs> pet because our pet understand they behave properly sometimes the owners don't <laughs> because they are not aware of and then um, uh, sometimes this uh, transportation when you like we are really very much worried recently one of my doctor friends she brought the animal small puppy or husky and it was not very far of distance and it was barking, 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 and they didn't listen to, you know, actually they should get by road they brought. It was hot or whatever, I don't know. They didn't expect it. She was a human doctor, obviously, but she didn't realize it. And she, didn't, she couldn't connect to anybody to ask. And uh, she thought, now we'll reach. And they'll, by the time they reach in Mumbai, um, somewhere at Alibak side, uh, they came. And uh, they equipped the animal there. It died. It died ever so, so much, you know, it was a small puppy. How come she knows that uh, she's getting transfers, transported? You know, so normally we advise that some calming medicine has to be given if the animal is really getting a little hyper. Otherwise, anti-emetic medicine normally, you know, to avoid any type of vomiting and that may make it a little drowsy. You know, otherwise now our dogs regularly travel and we take frequent stops and, you know, let them do potty and uh, urine and feeding normally should be avoided during the uh, transportation. Otherwise, take a proper halt. You know, that is the way of transportation. And this disaster management is very big topic in animal also because, you know, whenever any natural calamity strikes, uh, sometimes floods, or even in Australia, we had that bush fire in any anywhere even i was in north india also there 
uh, this Uttarakhand and all you are seeing so many the even landslides all these things our animals don't understand anything and poor things you know if they are kept tied then they die there itself or if uh, you know they do they can't do anything but uh, if they would have been uh, you know let loose at least they would have taken some care in fact they can understand they can feel the natural disaster so uh, what care has to be taken when the animal is uh, you know, you know, nobody knows about the natural calamity, but nowadays, uh, little bit that hurricane or whatever, um, we know little bit about it. Some signals are given, so human beings find their own this thing, but many owners, they really don't want to leave their own animal and come, you know, they come with the animal. There's so much attachment. So in that case, we really need help of many, many people, you know, um, uh, those who we, we make a format of like what are the things to be taken care of you know even now if uh, we come out of a disaster thing to some uh, with our child then what we need like some food has to be kept for them collar leash has to be there because it should not get lost okay uh, one more thing is like that microchipping and all helps in that case a lot huh? even is a responsible owner also we just miss that point um, that uh, microchipping is uh, really ideal. Uh, okay, so just don't consider certain things is just a show off or something like which is a uh, for a pedigreed animal, any animal can be microchipped and it's a very easy procedure which doctor can do it for you. Okay, so these are the things you can take care of. Disaster management is also a very good option for you. Thank you very much. Madam, thank you very, thank much, you very much, madam. Yeah, most uh, welcome. Uh, please please put, put your, put your uh, uh, camera, on. camera on. Yes, sir, just a minute. Uh, thank uh, a lot, thank uh, Sonia, madam, for your highly informative, enlightening and entertaining talk, based upon almost all dimensions of paid dogs. Madam, you are such a wonderful speaker with lots of knowledge, experience and compassion for animal welfare. And hence, on the behalf of our department, I express uh, our willingness to have your series of lectures in future. Uh, and we start, we will take only representative questions. The first okay. question is uh, why there is gender specific preference or liking for pets? Why women prefer cat over dog as a pet? OK, the cat, basically, I think the size matters. That's why they don't want to have because the dogs have to be taken out for a round and all. Cat normally, if it is a local breed of cat, they go out and do the urine and all, you know, that they do outside and come. Otherwise, you can keep a litter tray and take care of it. The size matters. The food also uh, quantity is less that it needs to be, you know, care and management is lesser in case of cats. That is one thing. And um, another thing is dogs have to be taken out. You know, we need to have a lot of responsibility, more responsibility. But other, other things are the same. They also need food, water, everything. But the quantity of food, quantity of, you know, amount of care that you have to take is less. That is what. And the, another question was about the gender that, as I explained in my lecture, people think that the males don't need and they don't suffer from, but they also show quite uh, aggressive behavior sometimes when in heat or you know another female is in need the sexual desire that they show the lipido is there so that problem males also have but uh, people uh, many times neglect it they think that a female means the pregnancy and that the baby is to be taken care of but that's not the right way you can get both of them uh, desexed you know at particular age and that is that that is what we mean by responsible ownership as I said, the males, they go, go out when they get mated with the local uh, dogs and if it has got a venereal disease, TVT, what we call transmissible venereal tumor and all, they suffer from that also. So why to take that risk also? So let our dog also be safe and healthy and let the other dog also. So I don't think there is any sense in uh, having the gender specific, you know, um, priorities. Uh, we have a second question, ma'am. Uh, by Dr. Vanita Kamat. I am scared of stray dogs, so I really don't understand how to protect own self from them. Uh, see, uh, the stray dogs normally don't attack. If in your area, 
if the animals are attacking in a group or in on a particular because people uh, that is what you know for, as a child many times people have been taught like you know no those are the dogs these are the stray dogs shoo them away kick them off you know the, or um, you know throw stone at home you know as it is they are not enter, allowed to enter in our locality at all but normally they just want to smell you or they just want to and i'm not saying that you should go and touch a stray dogs you don't have a history or anything but normally they don't come and attack normally i have not seen unless you know they have a history of somebody hitting them or chasing them away then they also uh, show this type of behavior but nowadays if you see most of the stray dogs are operated you know what i mean by operation is this this sexing operation that animal birth control and they are given anti rabies vaccine so dr kamath i think i don't think you should be much scared of but again if you feel that certain type of dog is really aggressive aggressive is different right just coming close to you doesn't make any uh, problem or just try to be friendly offer some food <laughs> or something so that is another thing because normally they are not supposed to or if you think that they it is really become aggressive please contact any of the ngo nearby get the they will take it and check the check with the veterinarian and they would give you proper advice i don't think that um, you know any uh, ngo would say no for that aggressiveness unless it is aggressive please don't be scared of the stray dogs the next question is from our alumni yogesh paradkar in what way one can do something for animals in the community or surrounding if adoption is not possible yeah that is what we said adoption means you mean that bringing it by home but it's not like it's always not bringing it you can adopt it when the animal is in the ngo also you know that is what we say you can provide for the food you can go for the regular checkups you can go to take him around you know uh, there are ngos uh, uh, you know sometimes even horses dogs whatever their food requirement their a medicinal requirement or if you just want to spend some time you can tell them that these day saturday or sunday whenever you have time one hour you can take even small children there are tours organized at that even um, uh, available as i said any of the local breed of dog may let it be community dog Uh, you can uh, just um, um, be friendly with him or her the uh, dog and then you can just take him uh, even for the uh, you know visits to the cancer patient visit to the geriatric ward old age home or uh, you know any other uh, uh, places where they allow you you know or many many time orphan children you know they would enjoy there are so many ways you can spread the happiness on the faces of people also and on the faces of the animals also if you can do this and community dogs means what the dogs in your community area maybe in two buildings three buildings so if really everybody decides to have a community dog in their building building will be protected first of all safeguarding uh, you know because dog is going to guard it and mainly from my point of view if you ask me i am happy that every animal will be lucky enough to have a small shelter inside you know they can get a place in all the season they will be giving some medicinal and you need not be single person you know looking after it. it's going to be community you make a group of 10 or 2 3 boys girls or anybody uh, and uh, they can look after the food the water then the medicinal care what if required medicinal is not always required you know and if it is cold just provide in some bedding even old chadar will also do a old blanket from the house even uh, the clothing of the our children you can give you know uh, so that is also you can do and mainly get them d6 that is the most important and the vaccination bathing and all i won't insist as such but if it is possible it's well and good uh, another question from omkar how to know the boundaries or personal zone of the unknown dog to avoid that protecting behavior towards their owner and the owner see pay frankly speaking as i said uh, if the animal is allowed 
the entry in all the rooms in your house they don't uh, consider there is a boundary they will keep on running around from your main uh, door to your kitchen even sometimes uh, even near the toilet also they come right they follow you everywhere so uh, owner's dog should not have a boundary actually but the, the the other thing which we discussed was the anxiety the, the that type of guarding behavior they show is with the anxiety that means they really don't want you to enter in that particular zone so if you are normally what we say if the bedding and all is provided you just restrict but animal is not going to attack owner at all never never he may just play with you and if you allow you uh, the him in your zone he will allow you in your this zone isn't it but only just be careful when the female is pregnant but that, that also you know they they really don't bother for the owner they they ask anybody they uh, show the matter in fact they are very happy if you touch their babies and if you look after their babies there is nothing like they don't allow can animal uh, by a uh, question by shraddha can animal feathers or hair cause any human diseases see actually diseases obviously if it gets inhaled okay if it gets inhaled and another thing is that on the hair or on the fe uh, feather there are some type of fleas fly, you know that's our external parasite which i mentioned that may cause some allergic reaction so if by chance that means the animal is not cleaned or it has got something you know that um, the grooming is not done or maybe if um, um, if the fur is uh, matted or it has got dirt on it so that is one but there are thousands of allergens in the world you know even pollen grain also causes but we don't stop going near the uh, flowers right so uh, it's not the only reason many a times i have seen that people keep saying that uh, so, you know when you're pregnant please uh, throw away your cat even i was advised you know but uh, my children are born um, healthy way and they never had any but I, but again allergy is certain thing which a person catches when it it really cannot in the body is not immune to that so it doesn't mean that because mind didn't get you should not uh, you should allow but again that care you have to get it check but small whenever there are small children and all in the house or uh, geriatric people old age people i would advise that on their board uh, on their bed sorry or on the uh, you know they should not um, carry it more or those who are you know immunity immunity is not more resistance for is not more or if they are undergone any surgery or if they have got asthmatic uh, history then it's better that you you just but i again i have my sister one of my sister she recently took uh, means her daughter in law brought a pair of cats and now they are from two they have become four but my didi who is asthmatic she never suffers from she never suffered from i i had warned her to take care of but she didn't so sometimes you know allergy is a thing whenever immunity level is down it is there but the immunity level goes up then sometimes you may not and again allergens are as i said there are thousands of allergens so maybe you are allergic to one thing sometimes uh, some people are allergic to some type of dals the sprouts or anything you know right any type of food allergy also you have right so uh, it's uh, it's better that those who have got less immunity you preferably don't keep them in their room or uh, but uh, what you said the fur and uh, this thing uh, fur and the feathers if they are kept clean and nice normally they don't have proper grooming is they done they don't have otherwise we all veterinarians would be having a allergy right <laughs> because we deal with so many animals throughout the day so again the resistance develops with constant exposure also if person is really resistant is a really sensitive resistance develops so don't worry about it much but just be careful keep an eye on it if somebody is suffering please get it treated hello hello, hello. yes sir hello yes sir. Uh, because of lack of time we will stop the question and answer session here and i now request uh, ravinder shinde sir to propose the formal vote of thanks 
Okay, thank you, sir. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, you are yes, audible. Okay. So, good morning to one and all. I am Ravi Shinde on the behalf of Department of Zoology here to propose a top thanks. First of all, my sincere thank goes to our today's distinguishing guest, Dr. Sonia Chavan, Madam, for delivering, for accepting our invitations and delivering the talk on responsible pet ownership. So thank you very much, ma'am. I assure you that this uh, lectures or talk will be very beneficial for all the uh, pet lovers. So thank you very much, ma'am, for this wonderful informative lectures. Second, I'm very much thankful to our principal who have given the permission to us for conducting such a program. Next, I'm very much thankful to all office bearer, vice principals, uh, Dr. Ravindra Kode, sir, Dr. Seema Sapre, madam, Minal Mapaskar, ma'am, and Sun Takke, sir. I'm also thankful for IQC coordinator, Dr. Matthew, sir. I'm also thankful to all the faculties as well as head of the department from Kirti College for their direct and indirect supports. So last but not least, I am very much thankful to all the student participants because without them, it is not possible to make this program grand success. So thank you very much. So here with, with the kind permissions of HOD sirs and principal sirs, I uh, conclude that this program is over. So thank you. Have a nice day. Uh, we'd like to have a photograph with um, uh, all the uh, Department of Zoology teachers and uh, the uh, resource person. So I request the, my uh, colleague to switch on their cameras and so that we can take the photograph. And uh, yeah. Uh, Vanita Madam, uh, Sangure sir. Ravindra Shinde sir, on the camera. On, on. Inde sir, camera on kara. Inde sir, on sir, camera on nahi hai. Inde sir, camera on kara. Please camera on. Inde sir, on your camera. Yes, that's it. That's it. Thank you very much. Uh, I will end the meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you.